Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class 745. Thank you for your kind registration of the class. Today is the third class, third lecture of the class, and the main subject of the class will be transmission line theory. And transmission line theory will be the basic building block uh, to understand and to apply the signal line design of high-speed uh, digital interconnections. And my name is Jung Ho Kim, and um, I'm working in a terabyte interconnection and package laboratory at Department of Electrical Engineering of KAIST. This will be the uh, contents and outline of our class today, I'm going to start to talk about why we use digital signal rather than analog signal. I personally believe that we're gonna use more and more digital signal rather than analog signal. I'm going to talk about various uh, background to explain why we are uh, using digital signal more and more. Then I'm going to talk about the theory, background theory to apply for high-speed signal design. In order to do that, I'm going to start to talk about limitations of circuit theory. When we were studying circuit theory at on the graded level, there might be many assumptions and modelings and simulation methods, especially when we are analyzing circuits, we usually um, analyze it using uh, differential equations. Also, sometimes we convert the circuit theory to frequency domain using Laplace transformations to analyze the frequency response of circuit theory. But unfortunately, I will say repeatedly again in this class today that circuit theory has significant limitations. According, according to that, uh, the conventional theory may not be suitable for analysis of signal interconnections. In this class, because the clock frequencies and rising and falling time of digital signal is becoming shorter and shorter to a range of picosecond, we have to apply the transmission line theory. I'm going to talk about the field uh, contrib uh, distributions and assumptions related to transmission line theory. In transmission line theory, the uh, most important part of uh, new concept is line impedance and propagation delay that was not covered in circuit theory. So today I'm going to explain the transmission line impedance and propagation delay concept and uh, ideas. In addition to that, we're gonna talk more about the transmission line structures. There are many different types of transmission line structures, such as uh, micro stream line structures, coplanar strip line structures, stream line structures, and coplanar waveguides, as well as coaxial structures. We're gonna talk uh, more about those structures. Because we are uh, studying in digital domain, I think uh, time domain analysis is more suitable <laughs> to analyze the setup and hold time, timing margins and voltage margins. And so we're gonna start to talk about time domain analysis of transmission lines. The important part of time domain analysis includes deflections and terminations. Deflections and termination will affect the time domain waveforms signaling, and also it will determine voltage levels as well. 
also it will decide the power consumptions. I think in this class today, we are going to talk about this uh, subject. Uh, we are living in digital world right now. We are taking pictures using our smartphone every day and every minute. And also we are taking a lot of image uh, videos uh, and we are uploading those videos to your SNS or YouTube. However, um, when I was young, we were using a lot of uh, analog film type of cameras and we have had recorded our previous uh, images using uh, analog films and analog print. However, right now I assume that 99% of our history data and images are recorded in digital forms. Digital has certain patterns of signal to it is combining zero to one. In the case of clock signal, it may have some periodic patterns such as zero one, zero one, zero one, but uh, most of digital data has random data patterns, zero one, zero, zero, one, zero. According to your form of your digital data, or according to your actual data, it may have different data uh, forms data sequences. In digital data, we prefer to have either zero data a signal or one. We do not like uh, uncertainties between zero to one. That has certain advantages and disadvantages. However, because we are assuming to compute digital data and store digital data and transmit digital data, without errors and without uncertainties. That means we are we are wanna have clear distinctions between zero to one. That is the basic requirement of digital transmissions and digital signal processing. And we call it as a signal integrity. There are some reasons why we are using more and more digital uh, signals. And I think one of the most important background to use digital signal and digital data in this uh, era is the evolution of CMOS transistors. By using CMOS transistors, we can integrate on a, a lot of transistors and circuit into a tiny silicon chip. Because we are using CMOS transistors, we, we can achieve a, very low price. And uh, so because of low price and highly integrated silicon systems, now we are able to have smartphone and YouTube and data centers and artificial intelligences. This is the CMOS structures. It has NMOS transistors as well as PMOS transistors. In there, uh, we usually use the P-type P substrate. It has a gate and channel with the bias, source, and drain. Of course, we also have PMOS transistors and it has NL and we form a PMOS channel under the gate. By combining these two uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors, we can constitute an inverter. Sometimes by uh, connecting these inverters, we can make combinational logics. Also by having feedback, we can make flip-flops. By combining these combinational circuits and flip-flop, we can make a logic circuit who can compute or who can control or who can who may work as an IO circuit or a PLL circuit and so on. Sometimes it becomes a memory uh, circuit such as SRAM or DRAM and then the flash memories. 
by the help of Moore's law, we can make smaller and smaller transistors and circuit with less cost. And this, this CMOS transistor is very suitable for uh, calculating or transmitting and storing the digital signals. Uh, because of, I strongly believe that by the evolution, evolution of these CMOS transistors and integrated circuits right now, we are living in digital uh, transformations and digital error. And to achieve that technologies, transistor is not enough. We have to make interconnections suitable for high-speed digital signaling. Interconnection means at the transistor level, also at the circuit level, at the chip level. In addition to that, we have to provide good interconnections at the package level, PCB level, as well as system levels. That, so in order to achieve that goals, we may need some certain principles and understanding. And I think that is the uh, requirement of this class. In addition to that uh, CMOS transistors, we have strong evolutions of uh, DRAMs. Because of von Neumann architectures, we cannot complete all the digital functions only to use the uh, calculation circuit. We need to have memories. And especially for the DRAM has the very high uh, uh, speed capabilities and highly integrated. Because, and because we, we was able to make very small size DRAM with the minimal power consumptions, we can achieve digital transformations. In DRAM case, it can only store zero or one. When you fill the capacitor of DRAM with a lot of electrons, we assume that logic level of storage is one. If you discharge the electrons in the DRAM capacitors to the ground, we assume the logic level of your DRAM cell is becoming zero. So it is a purely distal memory. It doesn't memorize some uncertain levels between zero to one. We wanna make a very clear memory between zero to one. By the help of the technology evolutions, now we are able to make very fast and very small, small size and highly integrated DRAM. I think the now the digital revolution is heavily depending on this DRAM development. In order to achieve the digital transformation error, now we are using hierarchical computational architecture. In most of uh, computational burden is now on cloud computing. Now you can use the uh, cloud computing anytime, anywhere. Somebody is providing this computing and memory infrastructures for your services, but usually this computer, cloud computing is located a little bit far distance, like 1000 kilometers. Because of this location of long distance, sometimes their response is slow, even, even though they have very strong computational and memory capabilities. So sometimes you want to bring those computers near, near yourself. That is called as edge computing. Your automotive vehicle could be regarded as on computing devices. Sometimes you want to help hold held these devices inside your body that is being called a uh, mobile computing. Maybe long, long time in the future, you may put your computers inside your brain. If you bring these computers close to your brain, computing capabilities and storage capability will be reduced. But at the same time, it may have to consume less powers. 
but I, I, I believe that we're gonna have, we will more depending on cloud computings because uh, AI and metaverse will require more or more computing capabilities. Right now we are living in this era of cloud computing, but the problem of cloud computing is that it is consuming too much power consumption. So some people are working on quantum computing, new type of computing, it may have less power consumptions. I strongly believe that uh, one of this computing may not be the only solution. We're gonna have this hierarchical structure. Some of uh, devices will give you very low power, but uh, moderate computing capabilities. Sometimes if you need very strong computing and data uh, capabilities, you have to rely on cloud computing and quantum computing. All this computing will be connected using 5G and 6G networks. But anyhow, what I'm believing is that all these computers are digital type of computers and this, the dominance of digital signaling and computing will grow very fast. However, what I believe is that now, uh, as I mentioned before, Moore's law was the very strong motivations to be able to achieve this new digital uh, era, but now it is becoming very near the uh, limit. Uh, because uh, now if the transistor size is becoming a nanometer scale range, it is almost quantum dynamics range no longer we can apply the circuit theory and we can no longer we are able to apply the digital uh, logics to make a computers. Completely different devices and computer will emerge to replace this most law. As you see that uh, this is the increase of transistor numbers, uh, transistor size and frequencies and power consumptions and number of cores. Now in the um, range of 2015. Now we are in a in in saturation mode. Now we are living in 2020, and you may be very leader, become an engineering leaders of this area in two, 2030 and 40. I think Moore's law will be completely gone, and we have to find a new solution. And new solution have to give us interconnection solutions with the minimum time delay, latency, and power, minimal power consumption. But anyhow, uh, uh, let's talk about the advantage of digital signaling. We only have one or zero state, and we do not have uh, uncertainties. Because we have only zero and one state, we can apply the digital log log uh, logic design principles, and we can still use the CMOS-based um, computing architectures. So we was able, to, by using zero and only one state, we was able to remove the uncertainty of signals. And that is good for silicon CMOS-based uh, computational system, as I mentioned before. Also, it can be highly integrated to memory devices with memory devices such as DRAM, NAND, DVD, hard disk. And these devices uh, are basically digital memory devices. Be because of programmabilities of these distors and softwares, we can achieve flexibilities and diversities and programmabilities. I think. Uh, those are the main regions, or main advantages of digital signal processing. And I still believe that these advantages will go and continue at least for 10 to 30 years. As I uh, explained uh, before uh, in the last class, we're gonna have more big distal data. This, this data is basically distal data and the amount of distal data generation was started with PC period and it went to internet. And now we are using the smartphone. You are generating a lot of distal data uh, every second. Right now, our class is recorded in YouTube and uh, uh, videos. So that means 
at this moment and every second I'm generating new digital data and the driving force of the digital data in these days is the YouTube and Netflix probably and next motivation of uh, digital data may be related to metaverse and in after 10 years more probably we're gonna make more and more uh, bio and healthcare data everybody may generate have their own DNA and their body conditions and all this information will be converted to uh, di uh, big data as a form of digital when we are uh, generating uh, or collecting new digital data, I put high value of data when they have these seven properties. Number one important digital data requirement is identification. It means that we, if we know who is generating these data, the value of data will be higher and higher. Second important information is the time so we need to know when the data is generated and where the data is generated what kind of action it has right now i'm giving lectures and also number of uh, actions will be very important information and also connection right now i'm giving lectures on signal integrity and if there are some related actions which i may have today such as meetings and seeing students and reading papers or searching uh, internet that kind of action connection is also important and also the integrity of the action is very important so if you are going to have new business in the future if you you have to design your digital data platforms such so that you can collect these informations uh, by helping of the digital data uh, we can apply the artificial intelligence also metaverse is gonna use uh, uh, this uh, kind of cyber world uh, we, we will do a lot of social cultural economic activities there so that activities means that we're gonna generate a lot of digital data and also we may need a lot of com digital computing uh, capabilities also ai vr and mr will generate a lot of data it means that we're gonna have uh, we're gonna need a lot of digitally intensive computing power and resources now uh what is digital signals uh we it may have certain voltage level it may have zero level or five level to reduce the power consumption i i believe the voltage level will be reduced further and further and it may have certain sequence of zero and one if the signal is clocked it will have uh, zero one periodically it will repeat and repeat with certain period and cycle time but if the data is random it may have different sequence of zero to one however actual digital signal we are assuming that um, at the zero level we have constant zero voltage at one logical level we assume that we're gonna have constant uh, voltage level that is the assumptions but actually the it at logic high level we're gonna see a lot of noises and it may be coming from deflections or power noise or ground noises and also at the logic zero level we assume that we gonna we have certain uh, constant level zero volt or minus one volt but actually it is not gonna have constant voltage levels so our uh, class activity will be to study the principle uh, to understand how we can make this uh, this noisy digital voltage level as close as this uh, this uh, ideal levels. Now, I'd like to now talk about the technical challenges related to digital signaling. 
how to make this clean digital signal and we may have certain technical challenges. The first, uh, we will, we're gonna have very narrow voltage margins because we wanna reduce the power consumptions. At, at the beginning of digital, uh, digital era, we started to have five voltage levels, but right now it's becoming less than one volt. Why do, do we do that? Because when we have a transition of digital signal from zero to one, we have to supply the power current. Also, when the digital signal one is transited from one to zero, this charge electron has to be discharged through the uh, NMOS transistors. That means when we have transition from zero voltage to one volt, we have to supply a lot of powers. Also, when this, this, this digital signal transit from one to zero level, we're gonna have a lot of transition in a significant power consumption will occur at this level. And this uh, power consumption, we will have, we will have huge uh, temperature increase and it will decrease the reliability of your systems. And also you're gonna have some safety issues. Mm -hmm. So one solution to avoid that problem is to reduce the this voltage level, or sometimes we have to reduce the rising time and falling time. Reducing the rising time and falling time is not a solution at this moment because we have strong pressure to reduce the uh, time interval between the digital logic level. So one solution to achieve that is to reduce the voltage level from five volt to one volt, or sometimes we wanna reduce less than one volt. That is why we wanna reduce the voltage margins. Second uh, pressure we have is then a smaller timing margins. Why is that? Because we wanna compute and more and more calculations to during the uh, machine learning uh, training process and back propagations. Sometimes we wanna provide the real time services of artificial intelligence, machine learning and metaverse. So timing margin is becoming narrower and narrower. Right now, I would say right now you have to, when you are designing your digital circuits, you have to reduce the timing, uh, rising time and falling time, probably timing margin of your setup and hold the time in the range of 10 picosecond. But however, I strongly believe that in 10 years, you will be fighting against, against 100 femtosecond range. It's extremely uh, narrow timing margin you cannot accept any of type of propagation delay or parasitics if you want to achieve 100 femtosecond range. In addition to that, you have to deal with uh, very broadband uh, high frequency signals. In RF communications of 10 gigahertz or 30 gigahertz of 5G, 6G networks, they are very narrow RF uh, electromagnetic waves you have to dealing with the very one gigahertz to 1.1 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz to 11 gigahertz. When you are designing your matching circuits using the Smith chart, you only deal with very uh, narrow frequencies. But our digital signal has from DC to high frequency signal, 100 gigahertz signal. Why is that? Because your digital signaling waveform has very broadband signals because your data is very random. Sometimes your signal has constantly DC signal. Sometimes it is very periodic. So at the same time, when you are supplying your uh, clock, it may have very high frequencies. Let's assume that your clock frequency is 10 gigahertz, but it is distal signals. That means you have to be able to support more than 100 gig uh, gigahertz signals. In addition to that, you, you, ha you have to supply very large signals. Why is that? Because it is switching current. So you have to supply the switching current of 100, 100 amps or kilo amps. Very, very difficult. It is not DC current, it is switching current. It means that switching time of your current head, it will be extremely high. 
And because of large number of, interconnect, number of interconnections, some interconnections are placed very close to each other. So you gonna have a noise crosstalk problem. Also because of your switching circuit and high frequencies, you're gonna have huge amount of power supply noise and ground noise. Sometimes your circuit becoming is becoming an antenna and you will generate the EMI in maybe coupled to adjacent RF or analog signals or sensors. Um, I, th I think my personal belief is like this. When, on, when you are uh, designing your analog circuits, you may use the undergraduate level uh, circuit theories. And level of technical challenges with high frequency digital signaling may be 10 times more difficult and challenging. That's why I st strongly believe that uh, these are the list of the background why uh, the high frequency digital interconnection is much more difficult than conventional circuit theory. <clears throat> now, let me start with the uh, theoretical background of digital circuit. Uh, this shows the the clock waveform of digital clock, it has high level and it has a digitally uh, low level. It will repeat uh, with a time period of T and we may have certain frequencies. And depending on, according to the clock signal, your digital signal will be the turned off or turned on. And sometimes depending or according to your digital uh, clock, you may store some data onto your uh, storage devices. And sometimes you are sending uh, digital signals from transmitters and receivers. Also your computing element of your circuit will compute certain flip-flop or some the calculation or combinational functions uh, according to your digital clock. So in order to do all this computing works, you have to deliver these digital clocks to your devices and circuits as well as computers at every places. So a lot of, of time digital clock signaling and will be the most important interconnection designs. It may have certain um, waveform from zero to high, high to low like that. If you do the Fourier transform, if you do the Fourier transform, it may have fundamental uh, frequency element, which has the same frequency as the clock, but also it may have second harmonic in this graph, it has yellow component and it may have certain uh, frequency component uh, who, who, who may have fifth, fourth or fifth element. Uh, I'm sure that most of you have engineering uh, background. So if we apply the Fourier transform, we're gonna see many high frequency component, fundamental frequencies who has the same frequency of the clock but at the same time, you may second harmonic, third harmonic frequencies. Depending on the symmetry of high level and low level, sometimes you may have only even mode harmonics, sometimes you may have odd, odd harmonics. My point at this moment is that this is the time domain waveform. Am I doing something wrong? Maybe I, I have to go back to again. Oh, okay. So if we, if we uh, okay, yes, if we, it may have second harmonic, third harmonics, and let's assume this is frequency and this is amplitude, we may have many high frequency harmonics. As I mentioned before, in the conventional RF circuit, they use only one frequency. This is very narrow frequencies, but unfortunately, the digital signal has very broadband signals. 
I'm not good in this uh, PDF uh, on the screen. So my point is that this is the time domain waveform of clock, but in the frequency domain, it may have many harmonics. This is the, one of the examples. Let's assume that uh, we have 500 megahertz clock the signal, which are being used in your computers. Let's assume that you have 300 picosecond rising time and falling time. Then as I mentioned before, it will have 500 clock component as well as 100 clock component and 2.5, I think this is symmetry, rising time and falling time and high level or low, low level is the same. So it has only all the harmonics of 500 megahertz, 1.5 um, megahertz and 2.5 gigahertz. And so, so my point is that when you are sending clock signal your, into your computer or your circuit or your devices, you have to design your interconnection so that you can uh, deliver this uh, high frequency digital signal to everywhere. But then you have your interconnection structure has to convey 500 as well as 8.5 gigahertz, very, very broadband. When we are designing RF circuit or analog circuit, we are, we sometimes using using uh you are, we are using matching technique using L circuit or C circuit, but that is not applicable to this because impedance uh by capacitance and inductance changes at every other frequencies. So so your circuit impedance will be depending on frequencies. That is not acceptable for high-speed digital interconnection. In digital interconnections, your circuit has to have constant impedance all over this frequency from 500 megahertz to uh, 8.5 gigahertz. But surprisingly, only see that, let's look at the envelope of this amplitude of your frequency component. It has 13 nodes, zeros, at certain frequencies, and that appears periodically. And this null point is depending on the inverse of your rising and falling time. In this case, rising time is 300 picosecond, and one of the uh, 300 picosecond is becoming 3.33 gigahertz. At 33.6 gigahertz, 6 .6 gigahertz, it has Null point. So depending on your rising time and falling time your, of your clock signal, it may have different shape of envelope of your clock frequencies. Um, these are the frequency spectrum of your clock signal. I once again, I would like to emphasize that your interconnections when you are designing the clock trees inside your chip or inside your computers, using cable or inside your PCB, you have to design your interconnections to demonstrate or to guarantee proper propagation and delivery of digital signals uh, with the same amount of time that is being called as the SKU, you have to deliver that. That is the very challenging part of digital clock signaling. Let's assume now you are sending Random data, it could be random 0 or 1 with the reference clock of 1 gigabps. Um, when you are sending data between GPU and memory or inside chip, your data might be random. And we usually has representing that amount of data bandwidth with 1 gigabps. If you have thousand lines, total amount of data transmission bandwidth will be increasing. So there are two elements that will determine the bandwidth of computation or IO data transmission. One part is the data uh, per line that is represented by gigabps and uh, multiply total data bandwidth will be multiplied by number of interconnections. In this case, 
a rising and falling time is 300 picoseconds. And then you see again, in the clock signal, we have very uh, discrete el frequency element, but because of the random nature, the frequency spectrum of data has much broader frequency element. Again, null point is generated by inverse of the rising time. But important thing, what I would like to say is that it has very high frequency component, but it has DC component as well as over 10 gigahertz element. So when you are designing your interconnection, when you are designing your clock signals, you have to deal with some certain frequency component that is the harmonics of your clock frequencies. But when you are sending your digital data, it, its component is very broad from DC. So you should minimize the IR drop of your interconnections as well as you have to design your interconnection which has, which has impedance matching to all of the frequencies like 20 harmonics. So in this uh, sense, designing of interconnections for data line is a little bit more important or difficult than clock line. Both are important. As I mentioned many times in this class, design of signaling is much easier. Designing of power line and ground line is 10 times more difficult. But anyhow, signaling design, signal interconnect data, digital data interconnection is not easy job. This is the one of the measurements we I have done very long, long time ago. At the time, we generated 200 megahertz clock. That is not very high frequency clock. In these days, we have to deal with more than 20 gigahertz clock. This is uh, maybe 10 times lower. And on the left side, we see the measurement of the digital clock of 200 megahertz. Because 200 megahertz, I think the period is five nanosecond. And now this we measure uh, the frequency component of this clock using spectrum analyzer. You see that many harmonic frequencies and you see that rising time is very fast. Because of that, we have very higher um, frequency component up to three gigahertz. So this is an evidence to show that in the digital domain, it is zero high level and zero level. In the frequency domain, it is very uh, broadband electromagnetic signals with harmonics of clock frequency of 200 megahertz. If we increase the clock frequency 300 megahertz, you see that it starts with 300 megahertz, 600 megahertz. So it's uh, clearly, evidently, is becoming um, harmonics of uh, 300 megahertz. If you use the 700 megahertz, we're going to have different uh, harmonics. Um, now, Let's move on to, uh, so far I was talking about challenges related to high-speed digital signaling. Now, I would like to jump to, into the limitations of lumped circuit theory, which we learned from the circuit class and, and so on at the undergraduate level. Now, I would like to talk about that. Now, we are very, uh, what? We are, because I, I assume that all of these students are, have background of electrical engineering. And we know that this is the definition of voltage and voltage. I'm not sure we have minus, minus sign here but 
when we are defining voltage in the circuit or electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic theory, we integrate electric field up to certain length. I assume that length, length is L. So to define, basically our uh, circuit theory is basically on, uh, uh, depending on Maxwell equations, that we start from electric field and magnetic field. And in Maxwell equations, we, we are saying how to generate electric field and how to generate magnetic field. In the extremely low frequencies, we are applying Gauss law or to calculate um, uh, H field. And when we want to calculate electric field, we are using uh, uh, Coulomb's law. But please remember that Coulomb's law, Ampere's law are true only when the frequency is extremely low frequencies. What I'm saying is that Coulomb's law and Ampere's law may not be true for high-speed digital signaling interconnection design. This is the extension of that argument saying that when we are defining electric field uh, voltage, we have to integrate, integrate electric field with length dl. And length of interconnection may be from zero to length L. But however, please take a look at this. Integration time delta t should be equal to length divided by speed of light. So our measurement time is depending on length of your interconnection. Let's assume that your circuit interconnection length is certain length and maybe speed of light is constant because of Einstein's uh, law. Three to 10 meter per second. That is not fast enough in this error, in this digital error. So for example, if length is one millimeter, delta t become 100 picosecond. So if your switching time of your digital circuit is 100 micron or millimeter ra range, we cannot apply this voltage definition. In other words, I would say if interconnection length is much smaller than wavelength of your digital signal, then we can define the voltage. But if your circuit size of similar to wavelength of your high frequency digital signals, your frequency sometimes go to 10 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz, then your interconnection wavelength become 100 nanometers or millimeter range. If your circuit is very small, like a nanometer or 100 meter, yes, you can define the voltage. But if your interconnection becomes millimeter range or centimeter range, you cannot define the voltage. There is the problem related to circuit theory. In the class, classic circuit theory, you apply the Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law. And you, you assume there is certain voltage in your circuit and you assume certain current in your circuit and you apply the voltage and current law. The re relationship voltage and current is defined by resistance, capacitance, and inductance. So circuit theory, voltage, current, a clear voltage law, current law, definition of your resistance, capacitance, inductance is all based on assumption that your interconnection and your device is much smaller than the wavelength. That is creating some problem. Some of your circuit and your device is 
not that small enough, especially the interconnection. Interconnection is usually long. Right now, device is uh, becoming uh, larger compared to the freak that the wavelength of your digital signals. First point is that your digital signaling has very high frequency component, like 10 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz. When you are designing your interconnections, you have to meet the principles of interconnections at those frequency ranges. But on those frequency ranges, the length of in interconnection is uh, short or not long, then you cannot apply this assumption saying that interconnection is much smaller, smaller than wavelength. This is not no longer true. If you want to apply the lumped circuit theory, this requirement has to be true. But what I'm saying is that it is no longer true in high frequency digital signals. So that means you cannot some case you can apply, but in the majority of interconnections, you can apply the circuit theory voltage definition. That is a very difficult part of uh, transmission line theory. And, and so in some case, if the interconnection is long, uh, you have to apply the transmission line theory or fully max equations. Now let's take a look at the definition of current. Definition of current is summarized by this equation. If you wanna calculate current, sometimes you have to count one electron by one electron by, you have to count number of in, uh, electrons moving through the conductors. That is the range of quantum dynamics. Uh, we are not going to do that because uh, there is too much calculations and there is uncertainty principles and, and we have to apply the direct formulations and so on. That is not area of engineering right now. Then maybe more area of uh, quantum dynamics and physics. Now we are more living in macro, macro uh, quantities such as voltage and current. So if you want to calculate current, you have to integrate current densities over a surface. That is the definition of um, a current. So in order to calculate current or define current, you have to know the current distribution uh, on a, some surfaces of your conductors or semiconductors. And you have to integrate that current density function over a space, over a surface. That means it may take some time in order to do this integration. Let's assume the length of your surface is two pi r, and then you have to do the uh, divide with the speed of light. And this time, integration time should be much, much smaller than the period of your clock. If your if your switching time is slow, then your current may change already. So you cannot change, you cannot define the uh, current. So in order to apply this uh, current definition, your length of your interconnection should be much, much smaller than the wavelength. But right now, our digital clock and data frequency is going very, very high frequencies. So wavelength is millimeter or centimeter range. So, so also interconnection length in your circuit or computers are range of millimeter range or centimeter range or meter range. You cannot apply, you cannot define the voltage which you, are, you have been using in your circuit theory. I want to I want to spend one more slide at this class and then conclude uh, my class today. Um, actually, uh, right now I, I'm in a re, uh, page of twenty six. Actually, I intended to go over fifty pages, but um, don't worry. I will uh, I will continue this class next next on next week. Now let's talk about lumped circuit theory. This is crop voltage law. 
assuming that all the summation of voltage along this uh, circuit is becoming zero. But one problem is that this summation will take a speed of light. So even though you are some making the summation using uh, in a speed of light, still it will take time. Distal, in the distal circuit, it is too slow. So in the high speed distal circuit, we cannot apply clear voltage law. Rather, we have to apply propagation and deflections. At the circuit theory, you apply the clear current law voltage law. However, in the actual distal circuit, you have to apply the propagation and deflections. The most uh, important part of uh, concept uh, on transmission line theory will be propagation and deflections. And that will be the main theory. And uh, next week, I'm going to talk more about that very in details. Another uh, thing that is against the clear voltage law is that if there is a magnetic field inside, inside this loop, it will create certain voltage. It is not longer to zero. That, that is another violation of the circuit theory. So this is a summary of uh, uh, circuit theory. We, we have to deal with very high frequency signals. It has from DC to high frequency harmonics. And also we have large parasitics. In, in this pre uh, previous slide, I was talking about magnetic field and that it will be related to inductance. And we have a large amount of parasitics because of high frequencies. So our electrical model will not be effective anymore. Also, we have to consider phase delay, propagation delay. All the circuits are not same phase. We're gonna have to deal with the phase propagation. So we're gonna have to talk about propagation delay. And also ground is not ideal. We have to talk about the return current passes. And in order to control the propagation delay, we have to design the reflections and terminations. And then in order to do that, we have to control the impedance. And I would like to spend uh, one more minute. Then what is the transmission line? And transmission line has a certain shape. And uh, sometimes we can use the two wire type. We just have two wires. One is the signal line. The other one is ground line. Sometimes we signal coaxial structure signal line is on the center and ground return current is on the outside. In this case, we have a micro streamline case. This metal will work as a signal line and this underneath metal will serve as ground line. And one interesting uh, requirement of the transmission line is that uh, it has to have at least two or more metals. Very important requirement. Single wire cannot transmit very high speed digital signal. And uh, we need to have at least we have uh, uh, the two metals. And also dimensions of this metal should be very important. This, this uh, cross-sectional dimension should be much, much smaller than the wavelength to define voltage and current. And uh, so once again, I would say, and the cross-section, we can apply the circuit theory and we can apply the voltage and current uh, modeling method. So cross-section of this transmission line should be much, much smaller than wavelength. And also we have to have dielectric materials and we, we wanna have very uh, lossless metals, but it's actually not true. And so that's uh, creating ISI problem and I diagram discussions. And we're gonna also talk about uh, dielectric materials. Now, this is conclusion of my class today. So uh, in the digital uh, interconnection, we have to uh, be able to send very high frequency digital signals. And in order to do that, we have to use the transmission line structures. Transmission line structure has certain requirements. First, it has to have very, um, uh, the cross-sectional structures, it has to have W width and height, and those dimensions should be much, much smaller. So if you want to send very high frequency signals, digital signals, this H should be less than 100 micron, and W might be in you know, a micron or two micron range. So it has to be very integrated, small size, and uh, then it will have certain constant impedance and propagation velocities. 
And then we have to deal control the reflections and so on. That will be the main part of the class on next week. And once again, the basic property of transmission line is that it will have constant impedance over very broad band frequencies. Like uh, let's assume that your clock frequency is one gigahertz. If you have to design the transmission line so that it has constant impedance from DC to 10 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz. Also, it has to have a constant velocity over a very fre uh, broad frequency range because the old digital signal has to arrive at the receiver at the same time. That means propagation velocity should be the same. And uh, this impedance and the constant impedance and propagation velocity has to be true at chip level, PCB, and package level altogether. Thank you for your kind attention. Um, yes, we're going to move slow and slow, one step by one step. And uh, it, um, so that you can enjoy this class. Thank you for your attention. Uh, 여러분 안녕하세요. Uh, 제가 뭘 오늘 얘기하고 싶었느냐면 어, 디지털 어, 클락과 데이터의 주파수 특성을 좀 얘기하고 싶었던 거예요. Um, 제가 얘기하고 싶었던 게 어, 우리가 그 디지털이 컴퓨팅을 하고 스토어를 하고 뭐 데이터를 주고 받으려면 레퍼런스 클락이 있어야 돼. 그래서 이게 일종의 약속에 맞춰서 움직이는 겁니다. 뭐 약속에 맞히지 않고 동작하는 컴퓨터도 있겠지만 90.99%는 그렇습니다. 왜 약속이라는 시간을 활용하냐면 우리가 달리기 할 때도 그렇지만 어, 북 소리를 치잖아요. 운동장에서 북을 퉁퉁 치면서 행진을 하면 오른발 왼발 오른발 왼발 하면 스루프시 좋아져요. 탁탁탁 순서대로 되니까. 그래서 우리는 싱크로나이즈 서킷을 사용합니다. 그러니까 시그 클락도 보내야 되고 거기에 따라서 어, 데이터도 같이 보내야 되는데 클락을 프리에 트랜스폼 해보면 펀더먼털 프리퀀시 뿐만 아니라 클락의 한 10번째 하모니까지도 깨끗하게 우리가 보낼 수가 있어야 돼. 그래야 깨끗한 디지털 웨이폼이 나옵니다. 그게 프리에 트랜스폼에서 하는 것처럼. 근데 랜덤한 데이터를 보낼 때는 그 랜덤이 1010이 막 랜덤하기 때문에 지금 화면에 보이는 것처럼 굉장히 브로드 밴드예요. 어떤 데이터는 계속 0을 보낼 수도 있고 어떤 데이터는 계속 1을 보낼 수도 있습니다. 그러니까 DC도 해야 되고 하이 프리퀀시 컴포넌트 10기가까지도 보내야 되는 거예요. 그래서 일반적인 RF나 아날로그 서킷 디자이너에서는 매칭 서킷을 쓰는데 그때 L이나 C를 씁니다. 물론 이제 라인 길이를 갖고 쓰기도 해요. 밀리미터 웨이브 서킷에서는 특정한 임피던스를 만드는데 그게는 여기서 통하지 않는다는 거예요. 절대적으로 DC부터 10기가, 100기가 헬스까지 55옴을 맞춰줘야 돼요. 왜 55옴이냐는 다음에 또이 다음 시간 주에 얘기하겠지만 그게 트랜스미션 라인의 특징도 이런 특징을 가져야 되고 터미네이션 회로 자체도 이런 일정한 임피던스를 가져야 된다 말이죠. 그런데 고주파가 되면 파라스틱 프린징 필드 때문에 캐피스턴스가 생기고 레지스턴스가 생기고 저항도 주파수가 높아지면 표면을 따라 흐르기 때문에 스킨 이펙트 때문에 주파수에 따라서 저항이 달라져요. 그러니까 이게 일정한 임피던스를 가지고 회로를 설계하기가 굉장히 어렵다 이 말씀을 드립니다. 그러니까 하, 어, 플라스틱하고 싸우고 고주파와 브로드밴드하고 싸우는 거죠. 오늘은 지금 시그널만 얘기하고 있지만 또 스위칭 커런트는 100암페어를 그런 속도로 빵빵빵 때려줘야 되니까 이게 장난이 아닌 거죠. 그라운드는 아예 눈에 보이지도 않고 어, 그렇습니다. 그런데 이제 인터커넥션으로만 보면 이렇게 굉장히 브로드밴드하게 일정한 임피던스와 일정한 전송 속도를 갖고 갈, 전파가 흘러갈 수 있는 전기 신호가 흘러갈 수 있는 구조가 트랜스미션 라인 구조라는 겁니다. 오늘 강의의 핵심은 그렇습니다. 트랜스미션 라인이 회로 이론에서 다루는 이런 것들은 다 트랜스미션 라인이 안 되고 어, 다, 그러니까 전압 전류가 디파인이 안 돼요. 그러니까 트랜스미션 라인은 스칼라 웨이브인데 단면은 볼테이지와 커런트가 디파인이 되니까 전류 전압을 디파인하지만 
길이 방향으로는 빛의 속도로 가게 해주자. 빛보다 더 빠른 속도는 없다라는 거죠. 그건 아인슈타인이 그랬고 제가 빛보다 더 빠른 시그널을 찾았으면 노벨상 받았을 텐데 아까 제가 오실로포스코프에 다음 주에도 보여드리겠지만 다그 아인슈타인 상대성 이론대로 빛의 속도로 가더라고요. 그래서 왜 똑같은 전파 속도가 중요하냐면 그래야 클락과 데이터가 같은 속도로 도착하니까 클락에 맞춰서 셋업 홀드 타임을 잡고 어, 시그널을 이제 읽고 쓰고 할 수가 있단 말이죠. 계산도 할수 있고. 이러한 구조, 주파수와 상관없이 상당한 주파수까지 더 높은 주파수가 되면 스킨 이펙트 로스와 다이렉트 로스 때문에 이것도 깨지지만 어느 정도까지 어, 일정한 속도와 임피던스로 전파가 날아가게 하고 그럴 때 단면으로 보면 볼테이지와 전압을 어, 전압과 전류를 디파인 할수 있는 구조. 이게 이제 트랜스미션 라인 구조인데, 이거는 이제 단면적이 저, 어, 저 파장보다 작아야 되고, 메탈은 반드시 두개 이상 있어야 되고, 로스를 우리가 조금 어, 무시할 수 있는 데까지면은 트랜스미션 라인이 된다. 그럼 트랜스미션 라인이 되면 뭐가 좋냐? 임피던스 전파 속도가 항상 일정하다. 그러니까 디지털 인터커넥션 디자인은 딱 맞다. 네, 그렇습니다. 근데 이제 어려운 점은 디지털 시그널 0101을 보낼 때는 이게 55옴이면 좋은데 파워를 공급할 때는 0옴에 55옴이면 볼트 드랍이 너무 커지기 때문에 이게 또 다른 이제 또 챌린지가 되고 그렇습니다. 자 이런 내용이 오늘 강의의 초점. 제가 사실은 준비 많이 했거든요. 어디까지 준비했냐면 한 70페이지 준비했던 것 같은데 엄청 할 얘기가 많았는데 자세히 하다 보니까 오늘 한 시간 다 됐네요. 1시 10분부터는 제가 이제 학처장 회의에 들어가는데 하여튼 뭐할 얘기 엄청 많습니다. 예, 끝까지 이렇게 저기 정말 집중해 주셔서 고맙고요. 여기 누가 어떤 학생 어 홍종현 학생이 여기 계시네요. 마이크 킬수 있나요? 네 교수님. 어. 만나서 반갑고요. 한번 오늘 강의를 홍정현 뭐 석사 신입생으로 알고 있는데 한번 석사 신입생 레벨에서 한번 강의를 한번 요약해 보시겠습니까? 어, 저는 이제 고속 데이터 전송을 하는 경우에 이제 클락 프리퀀시에 맞춰서 전송을 하게 됩니다. 그때 이 클락이 고주파를 가지는 고주파를 가지고 클락이 동작하기 때문에 이 과정에서 기존의 L과 C를 이용한 회로 그 서킷 티어리를 적용할 수가 없고 이를 해결하기 위해 이제 트랜스미션 라인 구조를 도입을 했습니다. 이 트랜스미션 라인의 경우에는 전파 속도를 일정하게 클락과 동기화를 해서 보낼 수 있는 장점이 있어서 이를 사용한다고 이해를 했습니다. 오, 원래 이 트랜스미션 라인 티어리를 원래 잘 알았나 봐요. 이렇게 잘 정리하는 어때요? 어... 전자당 수업에서 잠깐 접하긴 했었는데 지금은 네. 다 까먹어서 다시 수, 교수님 수업을 듣고서 이렇게 이해를 했습니다. 네, 굉장히 훌륭한 것 전자당 수업에서는 이제 스미시 차트를 사용하거나 어, 거기서 매칭을 할때 여러 가지 방법을 쓰는데 우리는 스미시 차트를 못 쓰는 이유가 어, 스미시 차트는 특정 주파수에 따라서 이렇게 돌아가는 커브거든요. 근데 우리는 특정 주파수를 쓰는 게 아니라 완전히 프로드밴드한 그런 면이 있어요. 그래서 우리는 타임 도메인 어넬리시스를 해야 되고 그래서 뭐 TDR이나 무슨 특, 어, 이제 프리퀀시 도메인 가끔 해석은 하지만 주로 타임 도메인에서 하고 뭐 아이 다이그램을 보고 뭐 그런 게 있고요. 이제 다음 시간에는 여기서 나온 것처럼 리플렉션하고 어, 프로포게이션 리플렉션 터미네이션을 어, 보겠습니다. 알고 보면 다 쉬운 거고요. 어, 그런데 이제 어, 그래도 한번 우리가 잘 정리를 다음 시간에 이렇게 해보도록 하겠습니다. 혹시 이성희 씨 계신가요? 네, 아마 마이크를 킬수 없는 상황이 있는 것 같습니다. 마흔 명 가까이 들어오셨는데 어, 제가 어, 최대한 천천히, 영어는 잘 못하지만 천천히 천천히 이렇게 절명, 설명하면서 한 학기 가서 어, 실제 여러분들이 이 수업 한 학기 들었다고 당장 뭐할수 있는 건 아니지만 개념을 잡으면 다음에 혼자 공부하실 거나 이럴 때아 그게 그 뜻이었구나 해서 기초 개념을 잡도록 하겠습니다. 
송전, 홍전은 학생 감사하고요. 여러분 오늘 수업 여기까지 마치겠습니다. 이번 주 어, 제가 보니까 점점 코로나가 많이 퍼지는 것 같아요. 근처까지도 왔는데 저도 어제 집에서 한번 검사해 봤더니 다행히 음성이 나왔는데 요즘 좀 떨고 있습니다. 여러분 모두 조심하시고 건강하시길 바라고요. 어, 다음 시간에 뵙겠습니다. 수고하셨습니다. 감사합니다. 네. 수고하셨습니다.